Growing up, I loved video games. As a child born in the 80s, I would argue that I grew up in the golden age of gaming. Nintendo was groundbreaking. Super Nintendo was the greatest console ever created with the greatest games. Sega was trash, but we can ignore that. And before you Sega fans get all upset about that, no one legitimately thinks that Sonic is better than Super Mario. Nintendo 64 had the weirdest shaped controller, but you could play Goldeneye on it, which was awesome. Still to this day, one of my favorite games of all time is Donkey Kong Country. And in the game, you'd play as Donkey Kong or his friend Diddy Kong, and you would throw barrels and ride swordfish and fight a giant king crocodile to win the game, which saying all that out loud makes the game sound absolutely insane. I remember getting it for Christmas one year and immediately busting the game out and starting to play. And overall, the game was pretty easy. But the thing that made the game extremely beatable was that there were checkpoints in every level. So once you got halfway, you hit a checkpoint. And if you ended up dying in the level, instead of starting over at the very beginning, again, you would start in the middle. It made the game super easy. So easy that my brother and I beat it within 24 hours of playing. My parents were thrilled about that one. Checkpoints in video games really started to become popular in the Super Nintendo era. And because of that, games became easier to beat. To be honest, I think they made them more fun to play because one bad move didn't cost you the game. Checkpoints were an easy place to pause and figure out what to do next. And that's kind of what we're doing today. We are calling today Vision Sunday, and it's a checkpoint. It's a checkpoint because we are a little over halfway through our first ever capital campaign called The Frederick That God Sees, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. And we're four months into the coronavirus pandemic that shut down our live Sunday morning services. So today we're going to pause and talk about the future. And I'm going to spend the rest of our time today sharing with you all some of the big things that are going on at Collective, as well as some of the updates that we have for this summer. And then today, right at 10.30 a.m. on Facebook and Instagram, I will go live to answer any additional questions that you might have about Collective and where God is leading this church. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And vision means a picture of a preferred future. It's the goal. It's what you're working toward. It isn't really about where you've been, although that always has an impact. It's about where you are going. So let's talk about where we are going as a church. I'm gonna start by talking about the Frederick that God sees. Last fall, we kicked off our very first capital campaign in order to raise the additional funds so Collective could lease our own 24 seven space. And if you're new to Collective, this will forever be one of the greatest moments in the history of our church. Our goal was $250,000 to be committed by people who call Collective their church home, but you all crushed that and committed over $340,000 to our future home. To date, we've had just under $250,000 given to this campaign, which means we are 70% of the way to our goal, which is amazing, especially during this time. And what that means is that we're still hoping that by the end of 2020, Collective will have a new home, and we will no longer have to be a portable church in West Frederick Middle School. Now, to many of you who started coming to Collective after last November, this might be news to you because we actually haven't talked about the capital campaign since Collective Online started. So if you're new to Collective and want to learn more about the campaign or the future of our church, we are doing something in the month of July that we're really excited about called Collective Replay. And over the next four Mondays, the staff is hosting an online viewing party where you can join them in watching or re-watching the sermons from the Frederick That God Sees series. So if you're new to Collective, if you missed one of the weeks during the series, or if you just want to watch them again because they were that good, we would love for you to join us. What's really cool about Collective Replay is that we'll, we will be introducing a platform that is brand new to Collective called Church Online Platform. This is actually how we will stream all of our live services once we move into our own space. So this kind of has two purposes. First, to give many of you a chance to be a part of this awesome campaign. And second, to test out a future way for us to do collective online when we have our own home. So we'd love for you to join us each Monday in July at 8.30 p.m. at mycollective.church replay. 
Also, we've had a bunch of people ask how they can get their very own 1745 shirt because we only handed them out the third week of that series. This is how. Join us tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. for Collective Replay, and I will tell you how you can get your own 1745 shirt. We hope you join us. Now, I also want to update you on the actual building search. When the campaign started, I began to work with a landlord on a space near Westview Promenade. Promenade? Promenade? Who cares? It was by the movie theater. And for six months, I worked with realtors and architects, the county, and everyone in between. And in early June, we were just days away from signing the lease when the landlord backed out of the deal. I was devastated. We had a team that had devoted well over 150 hours to the project. We'd spent $15,000 on required drawings and permits. But right before we signed the lease, our general contractor realized that over half of the building had a broken air conditioning unit that needed to be replaced and would cost $80,000. And for some reason, the landlord expected us to pay for it. Add that to the fact that we had to install an elevator and the fact that the building wasn't ADA compliant and we needed to update the entrance and the bathrooms. And the cost for the space just became way too high. So we asked the landlord to help cover the cost for the project that would give his building value once the lease was up, but he declined. So we're moving on. And this is frustrating. It's heartbreaking. It's discouraging. But it's also very clear that that wasn't supposed to be our future home. So right now we've been looking for new spaces and are currently having conversations with a few landlords and I hope to update you all soon because this majorly impacts when we will be, be able to get back together again as a church, which leads me to the next update. As Maryland continues to kick butt and the number of COVID cases steadily drop, a lot of people have been asking us when we are gonna start meeting in person again. And we don't really have an answer to that right now. You see, we recently got word from FCPS that they do not have any plans to let outside user groups into their buildings until September at the earliest. So our plan as a church, our plan as a collective is to continue searching for a building, to continue doing collective online and continue trusting God because that's all we can do. Trust me when I say that this is not how I expected 2020 would go. This is not how I wanted 2020 to go. I never imagined I would pastor a church through a pandemic. So to be honest, I'm frustrated, I'm tired, I'm sad because I miss being with you all on Sunday mornings, but I am also hopeful because the vision hasn't changed. Collective is still a church for the rest of us. God is still calling us to create space for lost and broken people to experience his goodness and his grace and his mercy. And that happens with or without a building. That happens with or without meeting in person. The vision of Collective is unchanged, but the way we accomplish that vision has to adjust. And that's biblical. Check this out. This is the verse someone sent me 15 weeks ago that I think about every single day. It's Isaiah 43. This is what it says. For I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Right? God is doing something new. Or how about this? This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Habakkuk 1. Look around at the nations, look and be amazed. For I'm doing something in your day, something you wouldn't believe, even if someone told you about it. Or check this out, one of the most famous verses in the Bible. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Right? These are three of the most inspiring verses in the Bible. They're all about the future. And they're super encouraging and uplifting, right? Like some of you like quote these to yourself all the time when you're going through a rough time. But do you know what they all have in common? These are all responses from God to his followers who were going through trials. In Isaiah, this is God's response to Isaiah when the Israelites are in exile in Babylon. They have no home. God's people are frustrated. They're afraid. They feel stuck. And God responds that he is making a new way for them. In Habakkuk, the nation of Judah had experienced years of prosperity, but then it ended. Corruption and destruction began to take over. Instead of prospering, the people were hurting. They were in poverty. And Habakkuk sees this and he cries out to God, God, where are you? God, can you please do something about this? 
And God's response is, I am doing something that is so much better than what you could ever understand or even imagine. In Jeremiah, the Israelites are still in exile, still waiting, still afraid, still frustrated. And God tells them that they're gonna be in exile for a little bit longer, but good things are coming. God is making a new way. A few years ago, I met some people who were forest rangers working on the Appalachian Trail. And before you picture Ranger Smith from the Yogi Bear Show, this group wasn't anything like that. They're more like bearded lumberjacks with chainsaws and beards. And their job was to walk the Appalachian Trail to make sure it was safe for hikers. You see, after a harsh winter, a spring that was full of tornadoes and millions of people hiking yearly, parts of the App Trail were labeled as unsafe. And so their job was to hike the trail from Georgia to Maine in order to clean it up, create new paths that were safe for people to enjoy. So they'd hike for a few days, clear new paths, make the old paths stronger, and then head to their next stop. And I was admittedly fascinated by what they were doing. So I began to ask them everything that I could think of. How did you get into this field? What did you love about your job? What was the most challenging part of your job? What was the weirdest story you ever had? Had you ever seen a bear? What did you do when you saw the bear? Did you get as big as possible and start growling or did you walk away? I even asked them what stretch of the trail was the hardest to navigate. And to be honest, I asked this question just so I could judge other states that had the app trail running through it. I was living in Tennessee at the time, but would have felt a weird sense of pride if they said Tennessee, Virginia, or Maryland had the toughest stretch. Seriously, I was just trying to make fun of states like Georgia and West Virginia and the other lame states that I'd never lived in before. But this is the answer that one of the guys gave me, and it's always stuck with me. Outside of the notorious spots in the trail, such as Lehigh Gap, Mount Washington, Mount Madison, and the White Mountains, all of the states have their challenges. But the stretches of the trail that are the most dangerous are the ones that have been worn away, uh, been worn down by years of hiking. He explained the oldest paths always look more enticing because they've been walked before, but they create a false sense of safety because they look familiar. Over time, the oldest paths get worn down. The rocks get smooth. The root systems of trees don't go as deep because the ground is disturbed. And in a storm, these paths become incredibly dangerous. So that is why part of their job was to redirect paths to give the old ones a break, to make new ones, and to keep people moving safely through the mountain chain. And I know that I'm talking about hiking trails, but this feels a lot like life, right? The path that we're on is no longer hikeable, partly because we've been walking it for years, partly because life has made it difficult. So a new path has to be made, right? The coronavirus has obviously changed things. It changed how we live. It's changed how we work. It's changed how we do church. I mean, for goodness sake, if you've been around Collective long enough, you've heard me say on multiple occasions that we would never do church online. Well, guess what? We're doing church online. It's a new path and it's not gonna stop, right? And so now we're creating new ways to accomplish our goals as a church. The goals are still the same. The vision is still the same. Those haven't changed but the route has, for I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun, do you not see it? I will make a path through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. So let me share with you what that means for collective, because even in a tough season, great things are happening. Starting next week, we're encouraging you to start getting together with your friends to watch Collective Online. Multiple of our small groups will be gathering for breakfast and to watch Collective Online. So if you're looking for a group of people to join, fill out an online connection card and check the box for joining a collective. Now, if you're not comfortable with that or you're an introvert and you don't wanna be around people, you can still watch from the comfort of your own home. A new path also means that our summer plans have changed. We're gonna do a lot more events that give you the opportunity to get out of your house, to see people and even spend a little bit of time together. Next Saturday, July 11th, we're having a shaved ice social where we're renting a Kona ice truck. At Nimeo Field in the parking lot on New Design from 5 to 7 p.m., you can park, get shaved ice, and hang out with other people. Games to go Maryland will also be there, so if you're comfortable playing some yard games, you can. 
Parking spots will be marked off so you can park and then take out some chairs and a blanket and sit six feet away from other people and just hang out. For the past three years, we've done an event called the Food Pantry Restock. We've collected over 20,000 pounds of food for local food pantries. We can't do it the same way this year. So we will be hosting a virtual food pantry restock to benefit the Frederick Rescue Mission. On July 31st, we're asking as many people as possible to send some groceries to the mission to help replenish their pantry. You can use Instacart or Amazon or Peapod or any other delivery service to send food their way. And if just 50 people chose to do that, we would collect thousands of pounds of food that day for the Frederick Rescue Mission. We will host an outdoor worship night later in the summer. And if we secure a new space, we'll host tours so that you can get excited about the future. Like those are just a few of the projects that we're working on. So if you feel comfortable being around people or you're an extrovert and you need to see people, these events will give you that opportunity. There are new paths, but, but we still love our city. We'll still be a community. We'll still create space for people to bump into Jesus. 2020 has not been the year that anyone imagined it would be but we can't wait for the old paths to open back up before we start making new paths on our own. I mean, that's what God's been doing since March, right? We've been trying to move down these new paths and try to start these new things. And God has honored that. You set a record number of people in collectives in March. We had 126 people in an online collective. We have a team that's been working since the beginning of this to figure out how we can do church online. And moving forward, you will always be able to watch Sunday morning services online. For the first time ever in the history of our church, 100 of you are giving online and have set up recurring giving. And because of your continued generosity, Collective has been able to pour into our community more. As of this week, we have been able to contribute over $7,500 to local businesses through Takeout Tuesday and sending coffee to local organizations and other events that we've planned. Right? The path might have changed, but the goals are the same. And sometimes a new path can lead to things that never would have happened before. Because if we weren't fully online right now, Kayla's story might be different. About a month ago, Kayla went online and filled out the baptism form on our website to start a conversation. You see, Kayla had recently moved from Baltimore to Walkersville. She's about to get married. And as she puts it, she wanted to move on from her past mistakes. So she decided that she needed to change and to reconnect and refresh with God. And so a neighbor encouraged her to check out Collective. And that's what she did. She checked us out online and that led to her filling out the baptism form. So for the past few weeks, Kayla and Danielle have been talking about faith and Collective and baptism. And that's what we get to celebrate today. Because God isn't just creating new paths for our church. He's doing so in people's lives. He's giving fresh starts. He's giving endless second chances for everyone, for Kayla. I'm gonna have you repeat repeat a profession of faith. So go ahead and repeat after me. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The son of the living God. The son of the living God. My Lord. My Lord. And my savior. And my savior. All right, dad, that's all you. Okay, get ready. I baptize you in the name of those. Father. (laughs) Father. Son. Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> this is the first time that Kayla had ever met anyone on staff at Collective. And I wonder if this would have happened the same way if we hadn't been forced to be fully online over the past 17 weeks. Right? What if Kayla is just the first of many people whose new past we will celebrate because of Collective Online? What if at some point this is your friend or your family member who'd be too nervous or couldn't show up in person on a Sunday morning but could check out Collective online? What if your invitation of a new neighbor to check out Collective could lead to a moment like that? Because I can't help but wonder what else God could do if we embraced our current situation and trusted that he is making a new way, a new path because it feels like he is doing something at Collective that is so great that even we wouldn't understand it if he told us. 2 Corinthians 4 says this, therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. God has given us this new way. 
It isn't easy. It wasn't expected. And we don't even know when this season will end, but we will never give up. So although we still have a long way to go and this summer is full of mystery, we are ready. And we're excited to see what else God can do with these new paths in our church and in our lives. Let's pray. God, thank you so much um, for the reminder that uh, you're doing a new thing. Um, God, that when we feel stuck or when we get in these seasons that um, are just tough and new, and God, when we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, God, we can turn to the Bible and read time and time again when you told your people that you're making a new way, that you're making a new path, that there's a good future ahead. God, that you're doing something so great that we wouldn't even fully understand it if you told us. So God, we pray that you continue to do that at Collective. God, we thank you for the new path that is Collective Online. We thank you uh, for the stories that that's brought uh, to our church. We're, we're thankful for the things we've been able to celebrate because of this season. And God, ultimately we pray that that continues to happen. God, help us when it comes to a new space for our church. God, help us when it comes to continuing to try and build community over the summer. God, help us when it comes to trying to keep the vision and keep the goals and love Frederick the same way. God, help us figure out how to do that in a new way over the next few months. God, we know that you can do that. God, we know that you create new paths and new way. And God, I pray that we as a church just can continue to follow that and trust you. God, ultimately though, we pray that you continue to create a new way in the lives of people in this church and in this community. God, that through this tough season, more and more people turn to you and realize that what you have to offer is so much greater than what the world has to offer. God, we pray that this is a season where we can look back and we can see life change for however long it takes to get through it. Because God, you will continue to make new ways and new paths and continue to show people grace and continue to extend endless second chances and continue to bring fresh starts to lives of people who call Collective Air Church home and people in our community. God, we thank you for what you're doing. God, we're excited for the future. God, we love you and pray this in your name. Amen.